I have seen a lot of debate lately about different Halo games and the argument over projectile versus hitscan, and with it, a lot of misinformation and misunderstandings on how these systems work and what their effect is on gameplay. Many times, you see Halo 1 be brought up as a reason why critics of Halo 3 are wrong in saying having physical projectiles are bad, and you have champions of hitscan bringing up Halo 3 as a reason why projectile systems are worse than having hitscan. If none of this makes any sense to you, here are how projectiles work in a nutshell. Halo 2 introduced a commonly used system known as hitscan in order to make bullets register over the netcode more reliably. In short, when a projectile is spawned, it can detect if it will reach the target in the next frame of the game, and if so, the game will know to send over the netcode the appropriate damage. This system is instant, and the most reliable way of communicating that a hit should register. On the other hand, Halo 1, which was not meant for network play other than local area network, or LAN, has the bullets travel a certain distance each frame, and if a player intercepts the bullet in that frame, where the two connect, the damage is dealt. This means as a projectile travels through the air, a player can effectively dodge it. Whereas in Halo 2, as soon as the bullet is spawned, the game can have it damage you. Halo 1 uses this mechanic extensively, with its bullets, for multiple gameplay reasons. The best example being the Warthog bullets, where at range the bullets slow down to almost to be as fast as the plasma balls, allowing a player with a pistol to dodge the gunfire and fire back to headshot someone out of the Warthog gunner. Halo 2 bullets all use hitscan, making any bullet fired an instant hit, but it still retains projectile physics for things such as plasma, rockets, and grenades. Naturally, these are slow-moving projectiles, and thus need to be dodgeable and not instant. Halo Reach, 4, and 5 would go on to use the same system as Halo 2. So what about Halo 3? Halo 3 is interesting as a result of the backlash to 2 and Bungie's general dissatisfaction with multiple aspects of the game, ended up going back to using projectile physics, and tried to blend some of Halo CE's aspects back into the game. Halo 3 also has an incredibly broken netcode. And by broken, I don't mean I don't like it, but things in it don't seem to work as intended. For example, you can get bullets that don't register their hits, even on land. So if playing on land, you can shoot somebody in the head with a sniper rifle, watch the blood spray out of their head, and still see them walk away fine. In addition, the checkbox is used to indicate if a weapon is hitscan or not don't work in Halo 3. Now, it's hard to know if this functionality was disabled at the engine level intentionally, or if it was broken and never fixed, as Halo 3 had some serious engine rewrites when adapting the engine to the 360. There are also other bugs, like the fact the game prioritizes the location of grenades on the ground with their rolling physics as a higher priority than the projectiles, and even the vehicles and player locations. Major yikes. But also, to Halo 3's credit, the game is also managing a lot more physics and objects being synced over the netcode as well. It's because of Halo 3's netcode issues and the general inconsistencies with things such as the BR spread as to why there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding where the blame gets put on projectile physics and the championing of hitscan. However, this is unfair to the concept of projectile physics. After all, no one has an issue with things such as the plasma weapons or rockets in any of these games. So why all the problems of Halo 3's weapons using projectile physics, or rather, the Halo 3 bullets? Well, the ability for projectiles to not register, no matter what your network connection is, is certainly one of them, along with a reduction in accuracy of player position. But it actually comes down to certain design decisions in Halo 3, possibly made due to the imperfections in the netcode. Remember how I said earlier in Halo CE, the Warthog turret would slow down its projectiles the further they traveled, although this does seem to be broken in MCC, but that's another video and has yet to be 100% proven and the pistol bullets traveled very quickly? Well, in Halo CE, the bullets are all traveling at around 300 world units per second, with some things being 324 and the pistol being 300. The exception is the sniper rifle, which travels at 1000 world units per second. This is why the guns feel very consistent and leading only becomes more important at far ranges. The concept is simple. The further the target is, the more you need to lead. At 320 world units a second, in 30 frames a second, a bullet is traveling roughly at 10 world units every frame. For a sense of scale, a frag grenade in Halo CE has a radius of 2.5 world units. 
So imagine every frame, four frag grenade explosions lined up equally, or 128 grenade radiuses every second. This is very fast, and thus the time you need to lead, while noticeable, isn't that severe. To top it off, the bullet impacts are very large and flashy, so you know if you miss and hit a wall. That is, unless the bullet evaporates when it hits 80 world units of distance for most projectiles. So what about Halo 3? Well, there isn't an average bullet speed to start. The closest thing to Halo CE would be the SMG, which travels at 400 world units a second. If you boot up Halo 3, you'll notice how reliable that gun is and how instant the bullets seem to hit. The sniper rifle, like Halo CE, travels at 1,000 world units a second, and the Spartan laser, 3,000. However, things get really weird when it comes to the battle rifle and carbine, assault rifle, and shock. The battle rifle, pistol, and carbine all travel at 180 world units a second, almost half the speed of the Halo CE pistol. That comes up to slightly more than two Halo 1 grenades worth of distance every frame. Meanwhile, the assault rifle travels at only 80 world units a second, slightly faster than that of the Halo 1 plasma rifle's top projectile speed, which would be 50. After all, how is a player to know that the lead times differ on three different guns whose projectiles are all invisible travel at three different speeds? The battle rifle is almost twice as fast as the assault rifle, and the SMG twice as fast as the battle rifle and four times the speed of the other automatic assault rifle. To top it off, the bullet impacts in Halo 3 are much smaller than CE, so it's difficult to tell where your shots are hitting the environment. To make matters even more confusing, the battle rifle has its wider spread, which, while not necessarily a bad thing on its own, can be confusing because there is no way to identify if one bullet has hit a target or if all three of them have. So, there you have it. That's basically a crash course on Halo projectile behavior across the entire franchise. My personal opinion is a well-designed projectile physics system is more interesting and leads to a wider variance in understanding the usage of the weapons. But there is something to be said about designing a well, and also having a netcode that is optimized for the projectile-based systems. Halo Ford's time was doing a lot more complicated things with players, vehicles, and physics than the games of its time. But that has obviously changed over the years, as network speeds have gotten faster and more complex data has started being sent, as well as more efficient ways of sending it. I hope you found this video informative, that has helped you understand better how Halo's projectile systems work. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me discuss next. So after recording this video, I reviewed it and realized I made a small error with some stuff. So I just want to clarify this real quick. For one, hitscan generally only applies to the headshot weapons. So you're looking at the pistol, the battle rifle, carbine, beam rifles, things like that. Stuff like the assault rifle and SMG, they wouldn't be the type of weapons to get the hitscan. In that case, they're still using projectile physics even in Halo 3. Now, the other thing I want to take note on is the red reticle. Hitscan only gets applied when a reticle is red. So if you're playing Halo 2 and you start shooting at somebody outside of the red reticle range, the weapon will default back to using the projectile physics. So yes, you can still sometimes lead with a battle rifle or sniper rifle or any hitscan weapon. However, anytime it's red, that's when the hitscan comes in.